Hi, my name is Mark Ayton from JISC RSC Northwest, and this is a brief talk about being a safe online socialite. It really is child's play. So who are the online socialites? Well, it covers all generations. Everybody you know. My mother, who's a great-grandmother, is uh, an online socialite. My grandchildren are also online socialites. It's across all generations. So everybody's doing it. Everybody's working online. What we need to do is help all our families and all the generations to do this in a safe way. So how big is social media? Well this short video is going to give you some idea if you weren't aware already. So I'm just going to play this now. In 2011, you did a lot of work. Nearly two-thirds of workers in North America are putting in more hours now than they did three years ago. Many of you spent that time in front of a computer, and a lot happened while you did it. For example, in 2011, the Facebook juggernaut rolled on, growing from 500 million to 800 million active users. While 54% of employers say they don't allow access to social media at work, the bandwidth on corporate networks used for webmail and social networking has actually increased five times since 2010. Worldwide, Facebook accounts for 80% of this social media traffic. But it's a different story in Japan, where unlike every other surveyed country, Twitter is king, accounting for 85% of social media traffic. While you were working in 2011, social media became a fourth for change around the world and a lot of news broke on Twitter. A lot of people just wanted to stay anonymous this year, and software designed to enable online anonymity rose in prominence. For example, Tor is now present on 13% of corporate networks. While you were working in 2011, how you manage files continued to change. Browser-based file sharing services are now used on 92% of corporate networks. While you were working in 2011, you also listened to a lot of music. Spotify debuted in the US, bolstering the growing streaming music market. And now, streaming audio is used on 99% of corporate networks in the US. And in 2011, you also helped create, manage, or share 80% of the 1.8 zettabytes of data that was generated this year. And that's a lot of work. So social media really is a phenomenon. But what are the catches? Why the worry? Well, it comes with a health warning. It can give access to harmful and inappropriate materials. Vulnerable individuals may be harmed or exploited. And from a government report, uh, children, young people and adults don't always have the knowledge, skills and understanding to keep themselves safe. So, what are we talking about when we're saying they can't keep themselves safe? Safe from what? How real is social media? Well, here's a, another short video. Puts the message over in very plain language. Um, no frills on this one. I don't apologise for it, though, because the message is very important. Hey, are you coming to my party? Yeah, I just made the event invitation. So you're having a party, huh? <laughs> Looks like I've got something to do this weekend. No, there's directions on the event invitation. Yeah, I just made it. Wow, it looks like all the work's already been done for me. I don't need to follow her home in my big white van. Okay, okay, I'll see you there. Alright, bye. I'll see you there. I know what you're thinking. This couldn't happen to me. I'm careful about who I'm friends with, who I invite to my events. But the truth is, with the creation of social networking sites such as MySpace and Facebook, dangers are bound to arise. Stalking, murder, and rape are all threats to those who do not lock their profile.
Hello? It's dangers of social networking calling, and it's for you. I love them. They are my favorite. They're okay. I haven't been on it in like eight years. I think they're absolutely terrible. I think that there's no substitution for an actual human interaction. If someone needs to contact me, they can just call me and support me. I think they're kind of creepy. Thank you. <laughs> no, because I'm careful. But I don't have a MySpace. I only have a Facebook because MySpace is creepy. Uh, no. I think at least Facebook's pretty safe because you have to be like a friend to look at each other's profile. My dogs are always in I sure do. I love these. If they look safe. If they're hot, yes. It's just for me to find people that I know I want to talk to rather than people that I don't know or don't want to talk to. I just don't care. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's so I actually do not know. I didn't even know I could lock my profile. Some people don't even know they have the capability to lock their profile. Take Sally here, for example. Sally is a Her name is Becky. Take Sally here, for example. Sally is a member of one of these social networking sites. She recently set her status to say, at the park. This would be a fine notification of her current activities had it not been for the fact that she has not set her profile to private view. Now anyone in the world can browse to her profile and know exactly where she is. If her profile had been set to private view, she would have been protected from online predators that stalk the web. So kids, we're going to show you how to lock your profile on a couple of the more popular social networking sites. So folks, remember to lock your profile. There's nothing wrong with using social networking sites. In this day and age, it would actually be difficult not to use one. And remember, just because you're older does not mean you're in any less danger. Locking your profile can protect you from the evils of the web. Just think, if Sally had locked her profile, she'd be on her way home right now. Well, I think as that, uh, that short video demonstrates, it is easy. There are real dangers. I think the really nice thing about that one it was made by the people that it was aimed for. So, a message from the heart. Everybody has the right to remain in control of their own experiences. And of course, nobody has to leave themselves open to inappropriate behaviour from anyone, anywhere, especially online. So, what can we do to, uh, to make things safer for all of us? Well, it's simple. It's knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the better position you are to make a choice. And, of course, nearly everybody knows how to work directly with people. Virtuality, or the virtual world, is simply an extension of actual reality. At the end of the day, at the end of social networks, are real people. And it's no different to dealing with the real people that we deal with face to face every day. Teenagers are often seen as the, you know, the people who know most about social media. And I think this is where the, the notion of uh, generations comes in. It's not just the adults who can suggest ways to be safe. Teenagers will know this as well. They'll know the techniques, they'll know the settings on the social media sites. So let's just play this video and see what these teenagers think.
So why should teenagers become teen angels? Well, it's because they want to make a difference. Because they'll get to work with companies like Oracle, Microsoft, AOL and Disney. Because they care. They want to be heard. We let the children and the parents know about the potential risks that exist on the internet. We go around to schools and we educate children and teachers about internet safety. They want to see themselves on Dateline, ABC, CNN. They want the media to turn to them for answers. And they want colleagues to be looking for them. They want to meet famous people and congressmen. Some of them have been hurt online and they want to protect others from the same thing. They look, they're looking to the future to change their lives. And they want to be part of the solution. These are views expressed by teenagers who've had the foresight to realise that the social media network can be an extension of their, their real life, their real ambitions. And they paint a very positive picture. Remember, anything that's made available online remains there for an indefinite period. So by helping people to see how they can be seen by others, you can help make a difference in their lives. So what can you do? What can any of us do? As we just said, the best protection is knowledge. Ensure you and those you care about are empowered with the skills and awareness that will keep them safe. Think about how you're going to handle this. How are you going to minimise the online risks to your parents, your grandparents, your younger brothers and sisters, your children, and how you're going to make it possible for them to learn, learn in a way that they can understand and grasp the relationship between social media and the real world. Any generation can help every generation to take control of their online security and identity. Because the most important thing, we should enjoy socialising. Do it safely but do it in a way that you enjoy it. It really doesn't matter how old you are. Just make sure you use the privacy settings. Select friends as carefully as you would in the playground, at the workplace, in your social life. Think about how pictures you put online might be used. Are they things that you would walk around and show people at work? Because people at work could well have access to those pictures if you put them online. Most important thing, help each other enjoy socialising with the safety of the knowledge of how to protect yourself. Thank you very much.